Hello everyone, today we'll be going over the system design course and today we're working with the concept of, of Cypher query language. Now, Cypher is the SQL for graphs. That is the first thing we need to label. So Cypher is considered the SQL for graphs. It's a declarative query language developed for navigating and manipulating property graphs, especially within uh, Neo4j graph uh, databases in particular. Unlike SQL's rigid table-focused syntax, Cypher is designed to express complex graph patterns naturally and unlike SQL's rigid table focus syntax uh, it embodies a more intuitive way of handling data uh, reflecting how uh, we can conceptualize and verbalize data relationships in the real world and also be able to be adaptable for uh, different parameters or and flexibility within various forms of data in cipher vertices and edges in the graph are described using a pattern matching syntax so there's a pattern matching syntax which also models after um, AC, ASC2 uh, art. Uh, vertices are depicted in parentheses akin to nodes or uh, in trees, so. And in parentheses as uh, parentheses. and the edges are arrows uh, with a description which conveys a relationship between each component of uh, vertices within the whole graph. Uh, this approach is not only able to make queries easier to read and write, but also aligns with the uh, cogn uh, cognitive process of understanding connections and associations. Uh, Cypher's real power lies in the ability to articulate intricate graph traversals and relationships with ease, and queries that may be cumbersome in traditional SQL, such as if you have an expansive library on specific books. Uh, it's way more streamlined within uh, within graph databases and especially when utilizing Cypher namely to be able to go off on uh, different relationships depending on exactly what you are looking for namely so you may have different databases that may contribute from one area to another or uh, establish relational databases as well that you need to go through uh, to be able to get the specific information you're trying to recall and uh, the flexibility of Cypher allows us to extend query execution so uh, Cypher allows us to execute queries in a fluid and dynamic manner in fluid and dynamic manners and overall uh, the, this following abstraction allows users to focus solely on what their data retrieval or manipulation task is rather than how. On the what over the how. And we know that this is declarative. coming from our web-based declarative queries lecture as well, over the how. By all means, if you need a refresher, feel free to go back on that video. And this is just a following brief overview concept. We'll dive further in depth in exactly the intricacies between Cypher queries as well. So by all means, feel free to take a screenshot. Let me just clean this part up. 
Now let's head over to our concept example with some ciphering query language. Now to be able to solidify our understanding, let's go over a concept example migration path. So there we go. Uh, let's visualize a query using cipher that identifies people who have migrated from the United States to Europe. So in this case, we have US to Europe. Uh, in our graph, each person is a vertex, so every graph, uh, data model, we are always going to need a vertices and edges. Vertices, in this case, in context, where they are the entities, edges are the relationships. The vertices, in this case, are going to be the individuals. and the edges are the ones that identify the individuals. So uh, we can just put in individual's identity. And as we've already stated, each person uh, in the vertices is a, uh, each uh, vertice is a person, uh, or vertex is a person, with edges representing their birthplace and current residence. So overall, birth, place, and residence. And our goal is to follow the edges to identify individuals who were born in the US and now live in Europe. In SQL, such a query might involve multiple tables and joins. In contrast, uh, Cypher, on the other hand, as highlighted by these examples that we have over here, since we are looking at birthplace and residence based on a person's identity, and each, uh, each of the vertices represents individuals. Over here, so name, so birthplace, type continent, United States, country, Idaho, state. And we have Lucy and the relationship between person born in within location. And we're able to see in particular between the vertex that we have and each of the edges represent a relationship and a following command that we have born in, lives in. And this is all, um, Uh, this is all uh, within the Cypher query language. Uh, so this match statement overall focuses on matching the pattern where a person uh, vertex has an outgoing born in edge uh, to a vertex labeled the United States and a separate lives in edge to the vertex Europe. So we have lives in Europe born in United States. Uh, this match statement not only scrutinizes uh, and captures the essence of our search, but does so in a way that we're able to visually and see ultimately between the person and other parameters that we've also added within the Cypher uh, query language, and then be able to make those matches accordingly to result in a query that is not only efficient, but also intuitive to reveal the names of individuals that have journeyed uh, basically from the United States all the way to Europe. So feel free to put a screenshot for the following uh, Cypher example that we have, since we already have a entity that we have already created with a series of parameters. And then we also have edges really focusing in on specific what declarative statements that we have to be able to see. So I'm gonna put these as edges. And uh, this one is a vertex, vertex. This whole thing will be considered a vertex since we're creating a whole entity inside of our uh, graph data 
this will be inserted in graph data model. With loads of parameters, and uh, this can also be used in the uh, uh, J. Let's clean this up. Again, feel free to take a screenshot. And we'll head over to our two practice problems to help cement the concept. And now let's go over our first practice problem. So in our first practice problem, we are going to be ciphering for um, in the context of a business analysis. In the context, really, of a business application, suppose we want to identify patterns of customer migration across regions to better understand market trends. So what we are doing is that we are developing a business application with identifying customer migration. for market trends. And every graph data model is always going to have vertices and edges, where the vertices are going to be the entities and the edges are always going to be relationships. So in the context of the entities, it looks like the vertices are going to be customers. And in the context, since we're focusing on migration, it looks like other data that we will be looking for is going to be the uh, region and or location and the edges on the other hand will be focusing on really where each customer is going to be moving and each move they make so customers And so what we are doing is that after we have established our context, we need to fully understand really, and our first step is understand how ciphering will be applied. So we understand how ciphering will be applied. And that really comes in the context of understanding the graph model and applications and components of the of the graph model which include vertices and edges. And how we are traversing through the data. So we already determined exactly what our vertices and edges are in the context of our uh, business application. But when we are traversing through the data, um, so this is not going to be a uh, something like a relational database where we are making a simple static uh, query, really just finding particular components in a relational databases. Since we're making a declarative approach, we are traversing a living map of customer movements. So we are doing a living map of customer movements. And yes, this all needs to be updated in real time. Let's put this as an example right over here so we know the context. There we go. 
And now, as usual, we always know that every data system always has a database, cache, and queue. So a database we can use uh, Neo4j as an example. Cache, distributed cache, and messaging queue, tracking the movements. And so once we have done so, we're going to have to move over to our second step, which is formulating the Cypher query. Now that we already know the context between our vertices and edges, uh, the Cypher query will overall, we're going to be matching uh, customers who were born in as an edge right over here I'm going to put in red born in and yes it has to be all caps born in and I'm just putting the edge uh, it, which will be connected to a vertex representing the initial region. And uh, also with the edge of lives in. Edge connected to a new region's vertex. So we have customer already moving between the initial region, now the region's vertex. So we already have a customer in particular that has a region already moving on the map. So we can have like a dot over here and then the customer is already moving with the, on the map and we are already tracking between where specifically they are located on that map. And this overall is to aim the trace of the customer's journey from one vertex to another. Now, finally, for the third part, analysis action. faults and failures. So once we already put in our ciphering within our graph data model, we just make data uh, based decisions based on uh, info from the graph data model. And always consider faults and failures. Yep. Consider all potential faults and failures from a hardware. software and human side. So let me just zoom out of here. There we go. Let me just move this over here.
and clean this up for you folks. And again, feel free to take a screenshot of this so that we can move over to our second practice problem. Let me just uh, clean some of this up. And so, yes, let's move over to our second practice problem. And now let's look at our second practice problem, uh, focusing on a social media network. So let's consider a social network where uh, you want to study uh, user migration from one interest group to another interest group or one page to another page. Um, let's uh, consider the shift of trends of interest. So social media and media users and shift in trends. Every graph like model. So it's going to have vertices and edges. The vertices are going to be the users and interest groups. While the edges are going to be the uh, memberships. or affiliations, or hashtags. And so after we've already established our context, uh, we would move over to really just focusing on matching the ciphering query. Where we do so, where we do so, uh, by matching uh, users who moved from one interest to another or subscribe to a hashtag for instance so we can say um has hashtag and join Um, interest. Has to be all caps, by the way. As those edges as well. Uh, so then the next part would be uh, understanding the analysis in action. Mitigate faults and failures. We already know. Cipher the data. And, uh, and look for faults and failures from hardware, software, and human side. Also consider scalability and reliability. Reliability. 
Let's see. Right, there we go. So, let me just clean out of this for a second. There we go. And so, yes, uh, this was uh, ciphering queries within uh, system design. Thank you again for taking time to be able to watch this. If you found this helpful, be sure and feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.